Uh, well, congratulations on the film. Thank you so um, much. Thank you. Obviously, I know you're a very prolific producer. Yes. Um, I'm guessing this was the kind of film that was given to you as a producer, but what made you want to jump on board and direct again? Well, it wasn't really given to me as a producer. There was a moment in time when some people were talking about making the movie, and they did talk to me and and say, you know, would you be involved? Won't want to be involved? And that was probably as a producer. I had already had thoughts about. I loved Hank Williams' music from the early times, and so I was really interested in that. Uh, about I directed another movie, kind of another quirky film a while ago, a few years ago, called Flash of Genius. And I, uh, frankly, have just decided in the last four or five years I was just not going to produce anymore. I figured after I produced 37 movies or 38 movies that that was enough. <laughs> and since I started as a writer, I really just wanted to get back to writing and, and to directing. It was actually where my passion had been. So. In terms of you, obviously, you wrote the script as well. Was it your decision early on to take it away from, say, Cradle to Grave and focus entirely on it? hundred percent. My favorite question, because I was just having a conversation about this, I don't care about Cradle to the Grave movies. I never wanted to make a Cradle to the Grave movie. And sometimes, and it's so interesting to me how many people have said that didn't understand what I was doing sometimes would come and say, well, wait, how come you didn't show him as a little boy? Well, because how many times can we watch some little boy, some little girl, like I say, with their nose pressed up against the glass and go move in on and go, oh, the inspiration to become, you know, Mick Jagger, you know. I didn't care about that at all. What I really, really was trying to do was sort of show a portrait of an artist in, as a young man inside of a really intense microscopic sort of world of show business at a very, very early age who was imbued with this talent that no one could explain. There's no way to explain how some guy out of that dirt was writing songs when Bing Crosby was singing songs called Springtime and this guy was writing songs called I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry. Men didn't even do that stuff. So I always wanted to focus on this very short period of time that I felt like if you got that, it would either provoke you to find out more about his life or it'd give you enough insight to say, you know what, oh, I, I, I understand this type of man. And really, it's a lot of the movies as much about country music is about men and women and marriage. And, you know, so those are the things that I was really interested in, not not trying to, and this happened and this happened and and here he is writing his hit song. I, I just, that to me is just both, you know, I can't, I can't really, I'm not, I'm not interested in it. <laughs> in terms of obviously Tom Hiddleston, who's absolutely fantastic in the film, did you settle on him very early, because the first thing you notice is that he looks so I know, similar. crazy, isn't it? Is that something that... I, I, I written the script, and I had showed it, and people really liked the script, and so all the young actors in Hollywood that I knew or knew friends of were sort of, I was getting incoming calls. And I met with a few of them, but nobody sort of, that I was convinced was right. And then I saw Hiddleston in War Horse, and I, first thing I thought was like, Jesus, the guy looks just like Hank Williams. And I did think that. And because of that, I did research on him. And so I went back and I called a friend of mine, Andy Wilson, who had worked with him on Wallander series. And I started really doing research. And I said, this guy's really talented. And I love the idea that wasn't somebody that we already knew in, in the US, you know what I mean? Because it's very hard to make to believe somebody, someone else, if it's they're that famous. If Brad Pitt was playing the role, he'd just be Brad Pitt. I don't care what you do. So Tom's anonymity at the time, which he no longer has, was a, a, was beneficial to me. And and I just knew he was talented. And I saw him do a lot of stuff. And the more we talked, the more I knew. I didn't know he'd be as good as he is. I really think he's. I think his transformation is remarkable. And I think people. If people like yourself who know film really can understand what how difficult it is to, to the average person. I, I I hope they get how far he had to go. Did you have to do? Did you work a lot with? Obviously, he has to do the accent, and obviously he sung the song. So how about that? Singing. Yeah. Did he have to go on some sort of like boot camp? Or yeah, he or did. He went to uh, he went at, to forty miles south of Nashville. He oh, stayed wow. with a guy named Rodney Crowell. Rodney Crowell is a, a god in Nashville. He's a he wrote a song called "Till I Gain Control Again." That he's won two or three Grammys. He's touring with Emmy Lou Harris right now. Rodney's a really really famous Nashville musician. And Tom, 
I introduced the two of them because I needed somebody to guide the music and put, you know, and guide Tom through this. And Tom lived at, I wouldn't do that. I live in a hotel. He lived at Rodney's house for five and a half weeks. And they worked every day. Tom would run in the morning and they would work 12, 13, 14 hours a day. And I, I knew he could never sound exactly like Hank Williams. I told him that. My goal was to not lip sync it and to make the experience visceral for you. So that when you're watching it, it's not like you're comparing them to Hank Williams. You're just going, oh, I'm inside this movie. I'm inside this character. Yeah. And to me, both he and Elizabeth and everybody else, all that, they did that. They kind of created this world that's it's really much more about the human aspects of their life than it is about trying to show you why he's a movie, why he was a rock star. Have you got the taste for directing again now? Is that what oh you yeah, going yeah, forward? yeah. I'm, I'm the next. I'm not. If I produce it, I'm directing it. Yeah, I'm already <laughs> on to the next. What I'm going to do next.